Welcome back to the new episode of Interviews, How Does It Feel to Be a Classical Female Musician? Where we talk about careers, challenges of being a woman in a classical music world, and the general gender inequalities in the same business. It's a series of interviews with prominent female musicians. You can find out more in the descriptions below. My name is Romana Schimbera, and I am very happy to introduce you my next co-speaker, Belenice moreno Gil. Uh, composer from Spain. Hello, Beleni. Hi, how are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, and you? I'm fine, I'm fine. And first of all, thank you uh, so much for having me and uh, for this podcast. And I'm so happy to be with you sharing this time. <laughs> it's a pleasure of mine. You are a versatile art artist, composer, musicologist, dramatist, and singer. You finished your studies in 2018, and since then, your artistic career was focused on the creation of contemporary music theater and musical drama circuits. How was for you the entrance to the professional music world? Well, um, I think we are talking about my entrance into the uh, professional world of composition, right? Yes. So, um, yeah. Um, my entrance was fortuitous, was something unexpected. Um, I started working with Oscar Escudero, a composer with whom I still work today with. Um, um, until um, we were commissioned uh, for a piece called Subnormal Europe, I wasn't aware that I was in. So I, I felt like, okay, I am playing a game that we call composer, but I wasn't aware because I didn't study composition. That it's a, a very important thing because if you don't have reference to, to know what it means to be a woman composer, you don't really know how to manage the war and what means to be a composer nowadays, of course. Um, and yes, I think um, that's it. Um, at the very beginning, um, I think the, the rest of the older colleges, um, I think they, they they thought that I wasn't a composer because that thing that I, I didn't study composition. Um, and then I am so young as, and you need too much time to be recognized as a composer. So I think they don't give me, gave me much more importance. So yes, I think that, that, that is, that is, yeah. But when you say about your audiovisual work, Subnormal Europe, um, which I will also leave the description below because it's really, really interesting, um, you didn't write just music, but also a text and light design, video and electronic production. And uh, in 2021, uh, this work was awarded an honorary mention at the Freaks Arts Electronica the world's most time-honored media art competition. First of all, congrats for that. Um, you already mentioned that you did this, um, this work with Oscar Escuadero. And could you say you felt any differences your achievements and work was looked at between you and your male co-composer? Um, of course. <laughs> um... I think um, it's, it's, it is really related to my journey as a female composer, uh, because I think for me it has been a complicated one. So um, of course I consider that I am, a, I consider myself privileged uh, because in a very short time, uh, my music is being played and premiered quite a lot. Mm, but I think there are many aspects of um, composition work that um, do not make me feel comfortable uh, as, as, as a composer. I think 
is still complicated uh, for me to be seen as a composer and not as the person who works with Oscar. Uh, that is completely different because it, it's it's a different status. So it's not an equal relation, it's a completely unequal relation. Um, before, before we worked together, um, he was already known and he has th their own path as composer. Um, some people followed uh, his work. So when I started uh, composing as a duo, my figure, my work is often uh, made invisible. Uh, for example, um, at the very beginning, um, sometimes happens now too, unfortunately, um, they have forgotten to put my name in, on programs. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I don't know, for example, um, generally, nobody contacts me to play our works. So they contact Oscar because it's, it's like, it's the, the male composer, so they, they go to them, and then I I, I have a two, two or three days before a mail, like, oh, okay, I contact Oscar, and now I contact you, just you to know that I will play your music, um, or I don't know, um, sometimes uh, I have been forgotten in institutional mailings, so yes, um, it's, it's a completely different uh, experience for him and for me. Um, I think it's, it's really related to the fact that I am a woman and the idea of composing two people together because um, the idea of composer is uh, the idea of a genius in capital letters. Um, it's something that we have uh, during all... Um, during all education, we have been instructed for us. You know, these big names of Mozart, Beethoven, Brahms, they're all men, they work completely alone. They, they, they are kind of gaps for us. So it's really difficult to say, hey, we have different approaches now to, to understand composition. And it's it's uh, it's really complicated and it's really hard because it's um, it, it's weighed too heavily in the imaginary of contemporary classical music. So yes, <laughs> completely different experience. I'm I'm really sorry to hear all those things because I mean I knew it's hard for female composers. It's always been, and now it's a bit better, but from your story we hear it's still kind of horrible situation. Um, but also when I spoke um, with my another co-speaker, um, she's a flutist and she mostly play uh, contemporary music. And she said that she had an, ensemble um, and she organized the concert. She was all the time in the contest with the organizers and everything. And then they came there and the organizer came to her and said, can I speak with your male colleague? And she was like, wait, wait, wait. I mean, at that time she didn't know how to react, but now she said that she's like, wait, I'm the boss in the group. It's my ensemble. I deal with everything, so you have to speak with me, not with my female, oh, uh, not with my male um, friend. And but she said that she also needs time to realize how to react in those in those moments. So how do you um, fight with all those not nice situations? Oof. Um... I don't know if I have an answer for that because I think I still trying to understand why that happens because for me it's like super clear thing like okay you have a score and my name is there so why I'm not for example uh, why, why it's not my name on programs I don't know 
um, that's happened to me. This this really the same thing that that your friend that you told me uh, when we finished a, prem a, a premiere. No, before a premiere, we had an interview, and um, and the person who who tried to to you know to have the the first sentence for an article about our piece. The first thing was, where is the composer? And I said, uh, well, we are two composer and now my partner have a lot of things to do. So I, I am here to answer you. No, they told me there was one composer. So uh, it's not only that you have to, to find the, the the, the um, impulse to say, hey, I'm here and I am do that, is that they trying to, to, to say again that it's impossible, that should be, a, it, that, there, that there is a problem in that, um, in that situation. So um, I don't know if, if I can answer um, good to that question because it's, Heart, um, Oscar is, is also my husband. So um, he, of course, wants to take care of me. So, and he wants to try to be alert and to say, okay, um, I don't, um, I, I want that uh, Belen is not invisible. So he really wants to, to push me and, okay, she's the composer too. But, um, uh, there are times when I don't know how to explain to the rest of the people that um, we are really a, a real co-creation, that we are talking about 50-50% each. Um, and that's the thing, I think, one of the things that affect me most is when someone who previously new um, Oscar works, say, uh, say um, come uh, after a, a concert and they say, ah, I love the piece. Yes, it's really, uh, this is very Escudero. That is um, yeah, yeah. name. So it's referring to, to the fact that the aesthetics are similar to other works uh, he composed previously or wherever. So these answers are very surprising for me because um, I have worked just as hard as him. And I'm sorry, but uh, this piece would not be at all uh, as it is now if, if I didn't have work on it. So... Um, I think this this has to change now, and for me, it's so important to have a space to talk about it. And of course, it's not the only thing that we can do, but we need a safe space for women to to express that things and to say that we are not alone. Because if we don't say the things, it doesn't exist. So. We need to say it a lot. And sometimes I feel like, oof, it's boring. I'm saying too much that uh, it's, I, I mean, 21st century, come on. Why, why are you telling all the time the same story? But then you see that the people don't know that. And the people are exactly. not um, aware of that. So, for, for example, in this kind of things, I know many people uh, are not aware uh, when they say that, that it's so bad. But uh, imagine how I can feel after a premiere and some people say it's very Escudero. So I mean, I have been one year and a half working in a, on a piece and you say me, it looks like very Escudero. So where is my name? I don't have aesthetic. I don't have a... Uh, uh, nothing or a style to characterize my work. So yes, I don't want to punish, but sometimes I, we need to find the ways to, to say at loud 
what we are thinking and what we are suffering. You know what actually was um, a very interesting sentence which one of my co-speakers said. He said that when she realized all those problems in the musical world and when she realized that we are still not equal, she decides to fight for all the women in this world, not just in Germany or not just in music, but for all of them until the end. And she said when she got this approach, I'm really important, I am good enough, and I created everything what I did. So you don't need my male friend or something. She realized that men's got kind of a tear in their eyes because she was so strong when she said it. So I, I mean, of course, I don't think that we need to be arrogant. I mean, in your case, uh, probably also, um, <laughs> because I mean, if they don't write your name in the program or if they say um, the piece which you created for one year and a half with your husband is totally his style, that's a thing where I think we could be also arrogant because there is no excuse for something like that. Um, and it shouldn't be allowed to do things like that. And I think people, when they say, they don't actually know what they did. And they even don't think about it. So if we just say it really loud and um, kind of honest and strict, I think at least they will think about it. And maybe I can't say for sure but maybe the other time will be different um but i think we are i mean of course we are already going with the time for example i see always um every year more concerts dedicated to female composers and um i have i know one ensemble from germany they are contemporary music ensemble which you're um they are like let's say half half uh, female and male and last year women in the ensemble said like okay stop now it's enough because they realized they are playing mostly just male composers and they said okay we don't play even one concert more if there is not a female composer on the program and i think what they did it's amazing, but in other hand, it's sad that they even need to do it because there is so many composers, female composers, really, really good. But somehow the, the whole musical world even doesn't allow us to see all of you because we are so full of male names and I think also we as as musicians and like instrumentalists actually we should help you in a way that we are really aware that it's a big problem and that you need help from us to kind of promote also female composers um, because unfortunately, obviously, the situation is worse than I thought, because I really didn't think that things like that, like you said, that when you're co-composer, that are still happening. Um, I thought it's just maybe you don't get so much opportunities or things like that, but this what I heard now is, I am shocked. I think you can see it. And I just, decide for myself that I will also try to do something and really try to to play more uh, female composers because you really need a place in, in our programs. And I think with that, if we start with that, then more people will see you and they will recognize that we need you in in our program list. We need you everywhere. I mean, it's obvious. Yeah, of of course. Um, uh, I'm so happy to hear that from from you. And um, 
I, I want to say that uh, in, of course, uh, our historiographic uh, world <laughs> in, in music, um, they, they didn't want to, to show the, 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 all the female composing words. So they say, okay, this is not, this is, this not matter. It doesn't matter, but um, I mean, uh, sometimes I hear from from some other colleges there are not good uh, female composer. That is something that is in 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 our imaginary because we don't know female names. And I think and all the names of males composers that you know are good. No, of course no. There are good male composer and bad male composer. And exactly. of course, we can be good or bad male composer, uh, female composer. So it's not, the, the thing is not to have only the best woman, the, the best female composer on your program is that, for example, in contemporary music, you go to a concert, you see and you hear some pieces that are not really good, but it is what it is. When you are creating music, sometimes you are doing the best music that you have ever heard in your life, or sometimes not. But you give the possibility to be good or bad. So for us, we all the time, we have to be the best. And this is something that I think is terrible because we feel that we are insufficient and that our pressure to be the best is something that uh, other people doesn't have. So if they have the possibility to go and to compose freely and not to feel the pressure and to say, okay, I'm here and they will premiere, why? we don't have it. Why we don't have this possibility? So I'm happy to hear that because, for example, institution now with this um, Women's Day. Okay, this is the first moment that we think that uh, female composer exist. Uh -huh, we need a concert. And then the rest of the year, they don't, they don't take care of us. It's like, I'm happy, of course, to be there in that program, but we are not a ghetto. We are not, uh, we are not like a group of people. We are half of humanity. So, I mean, we need to have the same importance every single day that we have a concert. So, of course, it's, it's sad to say I have to be like, like super clear with that and I need always a female composer there and it's sad to to see yourself and to rethink okay I have never been aware before but the thing is we have the possibility now to do that and at the beginning you have to think a lot and to and to find the names and to research a, a little bit but then I hope in I don't know uh, 15 years, Maybe I hope that we will have uh, all these uh, kind of uh, instrumental uh, students uh, doing at least half and a half uh, programs with females and composers. So I'm so happy to hear that because it's the beginning and we need to start for something. So, of course, exactly. But despite everything you said, and despite your young age, your work has been performed in many, many countries like Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Portugal, Luxembourg, Holland, Belgium, Denmark, and Spain. So how you got those opportunities, for example, did they find you or you, I don't know, or you, you applied for, for some project and then you won it and you got the opportunity to be played. Mm, as I said, I am a very privileged one. So um, uh, it's not so common 
people uh, that have like my age, 20, 28 years old, um, that have the opportunity to be premier and to be played quite a lot. Um, in my case, um, when, when we started with this first big um, piece, Subnormal Europe, uh, they came to us. Uh, the München Biennale directors went to Linz in, in Austria to sew our first piece together, OST. So they saw the piece and they say, wow, I love it. And we want this, but one, G, one, one hour long. So that was a, a really good opportunity, but uh, it doesn't happen too much. Um, in other cases, uh, some ensembles uh, came to us to say, okay, we saw something of, of you. Um, we want to create something together. And they apply for some money because, of course, uh, if, if you saw some, some videos of San Normal Europe, I mean, it's very technological and full of video. And I think our um, music communicates very well with people that is not too old. So, the, the bad thing is young people doesn't have so much money. So they have to apply a lot. Um, for example, like um, Simon Stiftung in, in, in Germany or other Stiftung or other uh, scholarships to, to do our pieces. But um, we are trying now to be producers too, part of to be producer of, of these uh, new pieces with, uh, with other, um, uh, uh, sorry, with other platform that we call a uh, clammy. And um, yes. Um, but do you always um, make music, um, compose music with your husband um, or you also do it by your own? How is it? Um, I do music by my own, but um, the things that, that I composed uh, until now are not visible because I am creating a big project. So it's now like just for me. So I need more time. And the things that I'm creating with Oscar, uh, we are creating together that because it's not just music, it's theater, it's music theater. So that's why we work together. And Oscar also have their own career, so they work um, sometimes. But we are really, really happy to work together because we are, um, I think, a good team. Um, and, you know, in big productions, it's necessary to have completely different approaches so it's it's yeah it's quite fun <laughs> so that's amazing why. you you mentioned your uh project uh clammy which is focused on the production of post-digital music theater can you tell us more about it <laughs> yeah um yeah clammy is a company and a producer of contemporary music theater um, that Oscar and I develop as, as its directors. It's a project that I am really, really, really excited about um, that approach creation from a transdisciplinary point of view. Um, with Clammy, we have already done several projects the latest, uh, uh, the latest, uh, I was the composer, but I was one of the singers. So it was a really good experience for me. It was the first time that I grew uh, for myself to, to, to perform myself the role. So it was a completely different experience to be out and in at the same time. And the piece is called Heroes of Estias. 
Heroes and Beast. It's a contemporary zarzuela. It's like that zarzuela is like a singspiel in Spanish, singspiel, we can mm -hmm. say. Uh, and this, this um, piece deals with, um, with a subject that we consider that it's very, very important in our country, that is the uh, Spanish Civil War. Um, the, the story is told uh, only by women in a rural context. So it's, you know, we are always thinking about female and um, yeah, female approach and inequality. So we wanted to speak from that side to the story because uh, they never appear. So, you know, the rural context, the countryside, really, they are forgotten for history. And they never appeared in great stories. And of course, they are not narrators of anything. So we wanted to put the focus on them and to say women in rural, uh, in the country, they, they have something to say us. So, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I I mean, I totally agree that they are kind of forgotten. So I'm really impressed that you that you found out this um, theme so interesting to do something about it. Um, and once again, bravo for your first role of singing your own piece. I think it's a double... Um, stage fright uh, for doing it. Can you, can you maybe explain or share with me how was it for you? How was the feeling to sing your own music? Oof, for public, uh, of course. I yeah, probably yeah. you did at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oof, was amazing. Was amazing. Um, uh, I mean, I think... Uh, Heroes of Bestias, this piece was one of the most special pieces that I have ever composed because the topic is really related to, uh, to my soul. Um, the main characters in the story are named uh, with the names of my uh, great grandmother, my grandmother, and my mother. Oh my God, so, that's great. <laughs> so, I mean, first, you sing and you art with the text that you already write, written and composed. Um, it's amazing because it's the first time that you can't see how they do that. So it's like, okay, I think I'm doing well. So that's very help helpful to, to have uh, Oscar there to say, yeah, we are in the, in the good direction or not. Now I can't. I can't judge me very well, so it's, it's, it's strange. But at the same time, to have this mm, powerful and meaningful piece uh, was amazing. So um, to be able to play that role that it's called Pepa, the name of my, I was my great grandmother. Uh, ah, okay that I, I, I know here. So it's, it's like a, a person that I, I, I have in mind and it's in, in, in some kind of inside me. So to be able to play uh, the role um, to my mother and to my father in the audience was oof, a huge gift uh, for me because uh, they didn't know that. They didn't know that the story told in somehow about my family so yeah it was amazing <laughs> that's great but for people who don't know you because you just said you didn't study um, composition and maybe we forgot to mention in the beginning um, what I know you studied uh, singing right Mm -hmm. But you studied in two different universities in Granada and also in Universität für Musik and Dar. <laughs> Thank you, Vin. Um, what did you exactly study and how did you come from this 
to the composing? Well, I, I study classical singing. So yeah, I study classical singing and musicology. Um, it was, of course, I, I all, um, how to explain it? Let's see. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I have been very related to creation. So not like composition or classical composition, but I, I wrote some pieces before, like theater pieces, just for mm -hmm. me. Um, I, I have been uh, uh, doing theater for um, a lot of years, um, you know, in, in singing, the, the performative uh, aspect is really uh, important. So when I moved to Vienna to, to, to study there, I started to, to learn a lot of things at the same time, not yet singing. I started with dance, theater, dramaturgy. I took all the subjects that I could. So <laughs> you were like, I came to Vienna, give me everything you have. <laughs> that's it, that's it. If you go there, you have to, uh, you know, to push yourself and to do yourself to have, I don't know, it's like, it's just once. So, so let's see what can I do. So that was the first thing that I started to, to learn a lot, to read a lot. And then um, that, that was that, that, that why I said that was fortuitous, that was something unexpected. To, to start with compo compo composer or co-creating, co co it's, it's because Oscar was um, finishing uh, the, the piece for, for the master exam. So, Just sorry to interrupt you. You were already together at that time or? Yes, yes. Okay. I think it's important for us to understand the whole story that yes. we um, yes, know true. if you were together or not at that point. <laughs> we were together, yeah, and we were together in Vienna. He was studying in Linz, that it's really mm -hmm. near to Vienna, yes, one hour and a half by train. Um, he had in mind to create a piece uh, called OST, Original Soundtrack, uh, for performer with uh, virtual reality glasses, uh, a big screen, uh, electronics, and so on. So he started to compose at home. And um, with other pieces before, I saw some things that could be mine, like hmm, this idea, ah, you decide to put inside this piece. Okay, so I saw that my ideas we're okay, so that I have like in dramaturgy way, I had some ideas that help him to develop the, the piece. But was with the piece before of OST, P point of view, it's called, uh, that I saw like, wow, this whole section is mine because we were just talking a lot and he asked me, um, what do you think about la la la? Um, mm -hmm. Okay, and then now I have this. How can the saxophonists do that? And I started to give so many ideas, and I saw like, wow, this part of the piece it's it's mine. So I didn't wrote it, but it's completely mine. But you know, it's that I didn't study composition, so I am not a composer. I can't call myself that. And with OST it was completely different because Oscar was the, the person who had to premiere uh, the piece. So he had all the time the virtual reality glasses so he couldn't see uh, their own body. So I was like the mirror. So Belenish, what do you think? Uh, I'm doing this movement, okay. What do you think about the text? And this was the very beginning of, of the piece. So he told me, what do you think? Do, do you have something in mind for the beginning of the piece? And I say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You are asking me just for something like, it's really precise. Like, why 
or what is the beginning of this piece. So I give him a, a beginning. Uh, we will have this, we, will, we can have this text, we can have this video. Uh -huh. uh, we went to the, to the piano and we can have this and this. So I was really composing, but, but it took time to understand that this was composition. So for him, for example, when we premiered the piece, my name wasn't, it, it, was, it wasn't on the program because it, it was something like very natural, but I knew that was my piece. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's difficult to, to name yourself like this because in your mind, I'm, I, I'm a musicologist. So I studied a lot of composers before. It's something very big. But then it's like, I, I know if you play the violin, you are a violin. I mean, the, the word is the word. Don't, don't worry. Don't feel um, afraid. And it's something that's uh, in, I don't know in English, it's called, but it's like, um, in, in, in Spanish we say syndrome del impostor it, that it's like you don't feel that you deserve it and that it's not your place in the world so it happens a lot with, uh, with the women because they don't feel comfortable in the, in the role they give him it's and they feel like I don't know if I will capable to do that. I don't know if I could handle this or how can I manage whatever. So it's like we are um, overwhelming with tons of pressure that we give us. So we decide to quit and we say, okay, I'm not the composer. Of course not. I don't want to have this pressure. So yeah, it's it's a pity. It's a pity. I don't know if this that's happened to you um, or not, but I know very, I know a lot of uh, women that had this uh, kind of situation. Like I cannot be the leader, I cannot be the programmer, I cannot be the curator. So, what is your experience about it? Yeah, I didn't have these problems because since I was little, I knew I wanted to be a cellist. And I was like, I will be a cellist and then I stuck with it. So um, <laughs> I didn't have that kind of problems, but for sure I had a lot of problems with self-confidence and stage fright and everything because I always knew how much I worked. And the work was never a question for me or never a problem. But I always had some kind of voices in my head or things like that. Like, are you really good enough in the moment which you don't need? Of course, in general, I knew I'm good enough and everything. Like I had competitions. I, like, I had everything. But when you have a particular moment when you need to be there exactly there and be 100% con concentrated and you know what brings if you present yourself very good and you know what you can lose if you don't do it then the head is <laughs> but i need to say that i'm really impressed by the by your story and i think it can be such a big motivation to, to everyone who listens us because you just showed me that everything is possible. And even if you already created or co-created the pieces before, you kind of couldn't believe that you are a composer just because you didn't study it. But let's be honest, you didn't study I don't know, science, and then married the composer and started to compose with him. You were actually all the time, as you said, you were kind of all the time creating the things and being around and doing the music. But so many creative ideas, you kind of, I feel like you just need someone to show you what is actually inside of you. Um, and 
I'm really happy that you have Oscar because I don't know how how much time you would need to recognize that you can really create amazing music if maybe he wouldn't be by your side and you wouldn't help him in the beginning. Um, so as much as well, as much as I were shocked in the beginning by everything you told me, um, I'm really impressed by your story. And um, now I see that, I mean, I always knew it, but you are one more person who, who show us that women can do everything, even if it's super hard, even if the whole world said you can't do it, even if you already did it and the world still say you didn't do it, you're still doing it and you're doing it amazing. And I'm really happy that, um, I mean, I really hope that also some of the people who will listen this podcast will go to listen your music. We'll leave it in the, in the description below um, because it's so inspiring. And now when... I don't know when I will have some some situations when I won't be sure if I can do it. I think I can think about you and recognize that you just need to do. But what I, I, I hope for you in the future is that um, you will find the right way to fight with all the people who don't recognize your work and who think that it's I don't know what they think actually, because if you are written as a composer, then I don't understand what they probably don't think anything. Um, but I hope also interviews like this will help people to realize that this thing hurts a lot. And maybe just to think for a second, how does it how would it feel for them if they would do an amazing job and people would think that they didn't do it at all or they would just forget that they did it so um i i think all of us realize something today especially instrumentalists that we really have a possibility to support female composers more um because i knew it's a problem but with with this conversation with you, I realized that I can alone do also something good for for all the composers, um, female composers. And now I give you a word that I will do something, as I said. Um, I don't know how much it will help, but for sure, at some tiny bit, it will. Um, so it seems... Uh, we realize that you're really a person who, who have a lot of ideas, you're very inspiring and you don't, you don't stop even if people kind of try to stop you. Um, and it's something which every one of us should have. So what, what would be your message to young girls as a versatile artist? how to find the courage to do whatever you want in, in the moment when you maybe think it's not the right one um, and not be so much afraid of all those unwritten rules and expectations. Well, <laughs> Ooh, this is a very important question, <laughs> I think. Um, I, I'm, it's it's complicated. Um, on many occasions, um, I felt that it's not worth it for me to have such a bad time. So I am really a kind of happy person. So that's why I want to go forward. But um, it's not it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, uh, I need to to progress and to and to grow myself uh, in the ways to find um, possibilities to to manage certain situations. So this is the first thing. The, the first thing that 
I am not a, like a, this kind of perfect sample. So I am human. So I try to, to do my best. So the first thing is we are all human. Um, we are all person that we have the necessity and the possibility to feel bad. Um, that's okay. So that's the first thing, maybe. Um, the second is, uh, it's very important to, to tell it, to tell what you are going through, to tell what's happening to your friends, to your female group, to, to of course, to support the other. It's so, 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 so important. What you don't say uh, doesn't exist. So let's go and to explain what is happening because it's 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 really it's really necessary. Um, uh, we are we we need to to support each other. Um, I don't know. I, I we need to to fight against inequality and and abuse because of course I'm talking about one side of of this of this world but i i know that there are female that are abused that are in a very very bad situation so we need to fight again and to create environment of safe spaces i think it's important to have a support groups in every single hochschule university to be there for for the people that that really need it um I, yeah get that you are not crazy it's something important that somebody wants to tell you that you are invite inviting yourself that you are creating a thing that is not real no if you are affected for something it's something feels you bad uh, you are not crazy and you have the support to say that that is happening to you um maybe for me, help me and maybe can help to other people to uh, channelize uh, this angry in art and to create, in my case, new pieces or maybe to create new programs only for women, to create uh, women ensembles to, to be really focused because um, it's, it's the only way that the, the artists have to, to change our world, it's art. Uh, so let's keep in our eye on it. And I think take care to each other. It's the most important, important thing because work is important, art is important. But if you are in an assembly, for example, um, someone is not okay, please don't go ahead. Don't, don't say, okay, let's continue our rehears. No, stop, speak to each other. And it's so important to, to in, in, in our world, sometimes we, we lose our mind with concerts, with, uh, with the audience, with all the things that we have in mind and it's always pushing us to go in one direction. We have to stop and to, to, to see that we are so important and we are not just art, we are not just music. Thank you very much for your nice words. And I think it's really important that younger and maybe also a bit older girls that we all recognize that when something bothers us, we need to say. And if we are raised that sometimes it's better to be quiet, it will go away, it's okay. That's not how we will get the changes. And to speak about what bothers us, it's nothing wrong with it. It can make the world better. It can help us to feel better. And that we feel actually good in our skin. So if someone don't respect us or our work or whatever, we need to stand for ourselves and fight for ourselves. Because if we won't, I don't know who will. Uh, thank you very much, Berenice, for your time and to share our story with us. Um, I'm really happy to, to be able to have you as my co-speaker and you opened me eyes to so many things and I wish you all the best with your future work 
And I hope you will have everyday less situations where people don't recognize that your creation is yours. I mean, that when you create with your husband, it's still half, half and not his. And that you need to be, that they need to appreciate that and see it. So I wish you good luck in the future. And I hope to meet you soon again. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that time. It was amazing.